shortly after the GeForce GTX 1060 release, I took Nvidia's new mid-range Pascal-based GPU along with AMD's RX 480 and compared them head-to-head -head on six-year-old systems. These PCs were powered by Intel's Core i5-750 and AMD's Phenom 2 X4-955. If you haven't seen that video, I recommend checking it out, but in short, it looks like you're going to see similar performance margins between the RX 480 and GTX 1060 on older hardware. We also found gamers are going to see considerably greater performance when using modern processors with these new mid-range GPUs. Many of you who watched that video requested further testing with Intel's Sandy Bridge and AMD FX processors. While I'd very much like to accommodate you all, given the time it takes to produce just one of these benchmark videos, it's unfortunately not possible. That said, I spent another two days of solid benchmarking to thoroughly compare these new GPUs on the AMD FX platform. The FX8350 was used for testing in both its out-of-the-box configuration as well as overclocked. Included purely for comparison is my standard GPU test rig as I already have the results for both GPUs in the system. This is an overclocked PC so I'm trying not to make it a direct comparison but rather show how fast these mid-range GPUs are when not hampered by a system bottleneck. The results are again very interesting, so let's get into it. In total, 24 games were tested at two resolutions, and as always, results are based on an average of three runs. That means at least 576 benchmark runs were made on the FX8350, so get a drink and something to eat, this is going to be a long one. First up, we have Armour 3, and right away at 1080p, you'll notice a shocking decline in performance for the FX8350 when compared to the 6700K. This CPU bottleneck does reduce the performance margin between the RX 480 and GTX 1060 from 31% down to 17% in favour of the green team. Increasing the resolution to 1440p drastically reduces the impact of the CPU bottleneck, and now the FX8350 is just a few frames slower than the 6700K with both graphics cards. Ashes of the Singularity has some interesting results for us. The RX 480 delivers the same performance using the FX8350 as it does the 6700K using DirectX 12, while there was a sharp decline in performance when using DirectX 11. The GTX 1060 also sees the same large drop in performance using DirectX 11 and while performance also drops using DirectX 12, the impact is lessened. Moving to 1440p, we see similar performance trends when playing Ashes of the Singularity at 1080p. The Batman Arkham Knight results are also very interesting and rather unexpected. Using the FX8350 we see that both graphics cards are noticeably slower at 1080p. However the average frame rate of the GTX 1060 is higher, though oddly the minimum frame rate is much lower. The RX 480 sees virtually no change in minimum frame rate from the 6700K while the 1060 sees a 16% decline. Moving to 1440p neutralizes the results and we see similar trends using the FX8350 as we did with the 6700K. Our Battlefield 4 test primarily tests GPU performance and therefore the FX8350 is really no slower than the 6700K here. The same is true at 1440p, though it is interesting to note that the RX 480 delivered the exact same performance on both processors, while the GTX 1060 was slightly slower with the FX8350. Star Wars Battlefront is another game where our test is primarily GPU dependent and as such, even at 1080p, both these GPUs deliver similar performance on the FX and i7 processors. This is of course also the case at 1440p and again it's great to see the RX 480 provided the same results on both platforms. Once again, in an unexpected twist, it's the GTX 1060 that drops performance on the slower FX8350 processor, while the RX 480 delivers the same 95fps average and 83fps minimum. Even at 1440p, in Black Ops 3, the 1060 was slower with the FX8350 while the RX 480 provided the exact same performance. Crisis 3 is another heavily GPU dependent game, at least the section we test is, and as a result the FX8350 and 6700K results are much the same with both GPUs. As expected we find much the same at 1440p. Dirt Rally provides more than a few surprises at 1080p. Firstly, there's a huge performance discrepancy between the FX8350 and 6700K. The GTX 1060 was 21% slower on the overclocked FX8350, while the RX 480 was 36% slower. More crucially, where the RX 480 was previously just 15% slower than the 1060, it's now 32% slower with the FX8350. So this is the first game where we see the RX 480 perform much worse than the 1060 on the slower FX processor. As we've seen previously, increasing the resolution to 1440p heavily reduces the performance margin between 
between the 6700K and the FX8350 in CPU-dependent games. The RX 480 and GTX 1060 are now separated by a similar margin on both processors. Doom is yet another game that throws up some very interesting results. Notice how the RX 480 dominates when running on Vulkan with the 6700K. Moving to the FX8350 seemed to completely eliminate the performance advantage. Whereas the RX 480 was previously 36% faster, it's now just 8% faster on the overclocked FX and 5% faster without overclocking. Meanwhile, we see the complete opposite with the GTX 1060, which is now faster than the RX 480 using Vulkan with the FX processor. Whereas it was previously just 3% faster on the 6700K, we now see a much more substantial 20% performance gain. Moving to 1440p completely changes what was seen at 1080p. The RX 480 is now able to comfortably beat the GTX 1060 with either processor and huge gains using Vulkan can now be seen on the FX8350. Meanwhile, very little in the way of extra performance can be seen when using the GTX 1060. F1 2015 isn't a hugely CPU demanding game, though the in-game benchmark does feature a full grid of AR controlled cars so that no doubt sucks up a few system resources. Here we see that the performance trends on the FX8350 is similar to the 6700K for both GPUs at 1080p. Moving to 1440p, we find it's only the GTX 1060 that drops in performance, though to be fair, it wasn't CPU limited on the 6700K. In any case, the 1060 and 480 deliver the exact same performance on the FX8350 and F1 2015. Fallout 4 is a super CPU intensive game, mostly due to poor optimization, but that's another story. Anyway, here we see a rather large decline in performance from the 6700K to the FX8350 for both GPUs, though having said that, it's the RX 480's minimum frame rate that's hit the hardest. Moving to 1440p completely eliminates the performance variances seen at 1080p, and both GPUs performed as you'd expect them to using a high-end processor. Grand Theft Auto V saw a massive decline in performance when going from the 6700K to the FX8350. Both the RX 480 and GTX 1060 suffered similar performance hits however. Once again increasing the resolution to 1440p eliminated the performance hit when using the FX8350 for both graphics cards. Using DirectX 12, neither GPU took much in the way of a performance hit with the FX8350, though it was a very different story with DirectX 11. Now at 1440p we see virtually the same performance when using DirectX 12 on both processors. Just Cause 3 is relatively heavy on the CPU, so a decline in performance with the FX8350 was expected. The impact wasn't that significant, and both GPUs suffered a similar performance loss. Moving to 1440p almost eliminated any performance hit the RX 480 took when using the FX8350. The GTX 1060 didn't fare too poorly either, though it did suffer a slightly larger performance drop when moving to the AMD processor. Mad Max isn't at all CPU dependent, and well, the results support that claim. Given what we saw at 1080p, the 1440p results are also as expected. Mirror's Edge is another game that's primarily GPU dependent, and as a result the RX 480 and GTX 1060 aren't much slower when paired with the AMD FX processor. The performance trends are much the same at 1440p, again both GPUs delivered similar performance with the FX8350. Overwatch does a good job of utilising a fair number of CPU cores, so despite benchmarking with two teams full of AR controlled bots, the FX8350 does rather well. Here we see virtually no difference between the 6700K and FX8350 with either of the GPUs. Naturally, given what we're seeing at 1080p, we also find no difference in performance at 1440p. Far Cry Primal is another game that's predominantly GPU bound and therefore the FX8350 is able to provide similar performance to that of the 6700K with these GPUs. The same is of course true at 1440p where we see virtually no difference in performance between these two systems. Rainbow Six Siege is another GPU bound game and therefore the RX 480 and GTX 1060 perform much the same using the FX8350 system as they did with the 6700K system. Oddly, at 1440p, the minimum frame rate of the GTX 1060 was much lower than we were expecting on the FX8350 system, so I'm not sure what was going on there. The Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor benchmark isn't particularly CPU demanding, so as expected, both GPUs provided similar performance on the FX system. This is also the case of 1440p, as we see almost identical performance on both systems. The benchmark in Tom Clancy's The Division focuses heavily on GPU performance, and therefore, we once again see similar results on both systems. As we've seen time and time again in GPU bound games, and even some CPU bound games, testing at 1440p creates a GPU bottleneck. Testing Rise of the Tomb Raider at 1080p sees the RX 480 and GTX 1060 deliver similar performance on the FX8350 system, though as was the case on the 6700K system, the 480 delivers much lower minimums. Oddly, at 1440p the GTX 1060 is able to outperform the RX 480 on both the 6700K and FX8350 systems. Given the 1080p results, this is very unexpected. 
For now, I've only tested the Total War Warhammer using DirectX 11, and as a result, the GTX 1060 does have an advantage on both systems. The GTX 1060's advantage remains at 1440p, though it fares even better on the FX system. Finally, we have The Witcher 3, and if you've made it this far, good for you. It must have been a slow day. Anyway, at 1080p we find similar performance on the FX8350 system with both the GTX 1060 and RX 480 when compared to the 6700K machine. The same is true for the 1440p results, both cards were just a few frames slower when compared to the 6700K results. So as found previously, when using much older Intel and AMD processors, the RX 480 makes out just as well as the GTX 1060 on less powerful processors shall we say. If you were to cherry pick the results, you could argue either is better, but looking at all 24 games, we find what is very much a back and forth fight on the FX8350 system. Speaking of the FX system, we found that at 1080p it didn't look great in relation to the overclocked 6700K in a number of games. However, in most of those titles, moving to 1440p eliminated the FX bottleneck and allowed for i7-like performance. This means budget games are still being looked after reasonably well by the FX series, though these processes should be avoided by high refresh rate gamers. Although I do typically recommend budget gamers avoid the power hungry FX series in favour of the much more efficient 4 threaded Core i3 processors, I can see why so many still prefer AMD's affordable 8 core processors. The worst examples of poor FX performance can be seen in Armour 3, Dirt Rally, F1 2015, Fallout 4, Grand Theft Auto 5 and Just Cause 3. That said, bumping the resolution up to 1440p closed up the performance gap to almost nothing in most of these games with these new mid-range GPUs. Meanwhile, the other 18 games played just as well in the FX8350 rig as they did with the overclocked 6700K. So to summarise the last 2000 odd words, the AMD FX8350 will do just fine with the RX 480 and GTX 1060, especially if you plan to game at 1440p. Thanks for joining me for another Benchmark Marathon, I'm your host man as always, and I'll see you guys next time. YouTubers like me depend on your support to continue improving the quality and content of our videos. To support the channel directly, consider becoming a patron to also get access to a heap of cool rewards and exclusive giveaways. Also, don't forget you can check prices and buy the products I looked at in this video through the Amazon links in the video description below. Thank you kindly for supporting me and the Hardware Unbox channel, it means a lot to me and I really do appreciate it, and in return I'll continue to work as hard as I can to keep producing the content you enjoy.